So, good morning everyone. Uh, this is uh, Pedro Salin of um, Technia. Uh, introducing uh, the last session in our webinar series on building compliance for device quality excellence, which is uh, introducing the device um, development suite and uh, device launch suite developed um, uh, on top of Inovia. Uh, the enterprise PLM platform. Uh, today's topic is on quality processes. So um, we, um, uh, I'll give you an introduction to um, uh, which processes are supported. And um, as uh, an example, uh, we will use the complaints to uh, COPA to um, change process, uh, which is really one of the core uh, quality processes uh, which have have an impact on uh, those products which um, uh, are have been released uh, into production. Um, it's one of the standard um, uh, quality processes which are um, uh, required um, in order to meet uh, general device regulations such as uh, uh, the European MDD or uh, the US FDA regulation. Uh, but also, of course, uh, uh, to be compliant with uh, ISO 13485 standards. So it's really core to any device developing organization. Uh, the important characteristics um, of the quality process is to make sure that any incident um, uh, which has an impact or severe impact on, on patients uh, is um, followed up in a proper uh, procedure. Uh, with the proper root cause analysis. And of course, uh, we want to connect that with our PLM backbone uh, in order to connect to the uh, change and have full traceability from the initial complaint through the uh, initial assessment and analysis, um, perhaps uh, with um, an adverse event report, uh, over to the more detailed root cause analysis and uh, the cross-functional uh, risk assessment um, of both um, any hazards or risks involved in the uh, in the issue um, or potential issues coming up in its future implementation. Uh, so that's the topic of today. Um, uh, I will also at the end uh, come up with some final remarks because this is the last session in our webinar series. I think this is the 11th session. So for those uh, who followed you, uh, followed us uh, through this series, um, you um, have 11 recordings and sessions uh, on various topics. But this is the last one. Um, okay, let's um, dig into uh, the specific uh, processes. So, if we look at um, our um, PLM suite for device development, uh, it covers a wide set of, um, uh, of different processes. Um, but as you can see here, uh, those which are marked with orange or yellow are those which have an immediate um, quality uh, aspect um, with regards to its contents. Um, and also as a remark for those of you who are new to Inovia, uh, this specific suite for device development um, it's includes some basic fundamental uh, characteristics of um, a PLM suite or a QSR suite or a QSM system. Um, such as basic routing and approvals, um, those are part 11 compliant. Uh, basic functionality for collaboration to route um, a decision uh, through an organization. Basic character characteristics of electronic records. Um, and of course, uh, the basic document management capabilities to understand um, how uh, the traceability and the audit trail of a specific uh, quality process or PLM process. 
the essence of having these processes connected to the the uh, device development backbone is of course uh, that whatever is made as a decision whatever finding is always immediately available for those who are actively involved in the product maintenance or in the product development related product development activities so whatever is a quality concern is immediately visible to the global product launch or product development organization. And this um, means that uh, the activities and understanding of the quality processes and potential quality issues are more widely spread within the organization. Additionally, uh, this means that we have the same audit trail on a new development, on a change, as on any quality process. So the audit trail will have the same contents and behavior for the quality processes as well as uh, the development processes. So you can really see the clear chain from the uh, initial uh, quality findings through the complete change, um, through the updated documentation for the update on the SOP, through its actual implementation. So it's really the same audit trail, the same behavior all through uh, all systems. Um, the solution we're looking into here today um, is based on the out-of-the-box um, Enobia implementation on the 14x release level. Uh, this is actually now an old release. Uh, we have moved on to 15x. Um, so um, uh, we'll stay with this release. It serves the purpose of explaining the process, how it's supported in the PLM platform. Um, and it serves as a good example. As you can see here, uh, there are a number of different quality processes supported. So, uh, there are a few processes uh, which are stressed in the upcoming revision on 13.485 and the up upcoming regulation, um, European as well as US. And this is related to the supplier quality management. Um, we've implemented it as a separate process um, dedicated for sourcing, but of course it's shared between sourcing and the quality departments. Um, uh, additionally, and related to this, is another module which we've looked at previously, uh, which is the UDI module. That's part of the regulatory filing and submission uh, functionality, but of course it's immediately connected to these quality processes. Um, we have also other processes, um, of course the one we'll go into depth uh, today, which is the complaint and adverse event uh, reporting, uh, but that falls a flow from complaint to COPA, but it could also be um, concessions or deviations or NCRs, non-conformance, uh, which follows the same basic logic at the complaints and it's actually very similar with regards to functionality. Um, other uh, modules uh, is the audit, um, uh, audit functionality, which is um, uh, capabilities for both internal and external audits and um, it's to track any uh, audit uh, and can be extended to track any um, inspection. Um, for other functionality, uh, for example, is risk and that um, covers any detailed risk assessment on the product. Uh, that is often combined with um, uh, other modules such as the requirement analysis, test and validation functionality. So you can have a clear red, uh, uh, red line or clear traceability matrix from initial requirements or the product requirement spec to the risk uh, evaluation and risk uh, hazard identification um, and the complete uh, risk management functionality, also cross-functional. Um, and have that as part of your IP, which later on is of course a natural part of the design controls as well as an important input for the COPPA functionality. Uh, 
We have uh, the module for training management, which covers um, all training activities, training classes, and training status um, of the uh, people involved in product development or product launch. The product validation and test management uh, is a complete set which covers the whole build-up of the test, planning of the test and execution of the test, and that's um, connection to validation, whether it's internal tests uh, connected to um, the validation, uh, the mapping to different standards, um, type tests, um, and certificates uh, with regards to uh, the validation. And then there are the separate functions for product compliance and materials compliance, which overlap with uh, the test and validation capabilities. More traditional document management functionality is the support for SOPs. Um, that is um, uh, actually an extension of traditional document management functionality uh, with the read and understood uh, uh, notifications on any control documents. Okay, uh, those are some of the supported modules on the 40 next levels. Um, especially the quality processes will be updated with 50 next. More on this uh, later on, closer to the summer holidays uh, in June time frame. But for now, um, I suggest we dig into the uh, demonstration scenario. So, uh, typical um, complaints to change scenario, uh, also covering the COPPA, would typically start in uh, the hotline support. It will um, pass by the program manager, um, but um, before that it will um, be determined and evaluated by both the quality lead the design engineers or manufacturing engineers, as well as the safety and regulatory lead. And this is a cross-functional analysis of a severe complaints event. Um, if it's severe enough, it will trigger an adverse event report. If it's severe enough, it will trigger a copper request. Um, and it's important that it's, we have a streamlined process from the complaint to the COPPA uh, through the COP analysis to the completed uh, change. So that's the whole essence here. Um, so it starts off in hotline support. Um, the key success factors here is to have smooth and easy and ease of use in the capture of a complaint. This is typically done either in a CRM system um, by a sales representative um, or someone working close together with the, with the customer uh, or perhaps with the patient. Um, or it could be done by a hotline uh, support engineer or hotline support representative which is just collecting uh, the basics um, on, on the uh, complaint. But the important part here is that uh, whoever is capturing the complaint is as early as, as possible uh, performs a qualification of the event, uh, making sure that all the relevant information is captured at the, as early as possible in the complaint registration. And typical information there is to uh, understand is this um, uh, complaint, um, has it occurred before? This is just um, one of very similar complaints um, so that we can reuse a lot of previous registration. Um, can we get the appropriate details on the product? Do we have a barcode to scan so we can get the exact uh, serial number? If we can identify the serial number and the exact individual uh, of a product, then uh, we can also uh, much earlier determine which supplier might be um, involved in this uh, uh, complaint evaluation and of course which uh, customer and how can we best serve this customer or patient uh, in order to resolve the complaint and provide proper feedback on how this case is taken through our organization. So that's the uh, point of departure to make sure that uh, complaints are e easily captured 
and that the information is correct from start. That we really get the information which we need uh, for different markets, whether it's reported in Europe or US or Australia, wherever it might be. So that's where we start. Um, as soon as it's logged, um, we get this as a complaint uh, topic where we need to do an initial investigation. So it simply goes to a quality lead, which does the initial assessment from a quality point of view. Is there a detailed analysis possible and required? Uh, what kind of warranty is it? Uh, or what kind of warranty issue is it? Is there a warranty active for uh, for the customer and uh, for from our point of view as the manufacturer of this uh, of the re related product do we have a supplier involved where we need to de where we need to detail uh, the warranty details and provide this to our supplier as early as possible for a quick response back to our customers um, and for the detailed investigation, we need to do a proper assessment on the specific, unique um, item involved. Where was it produced? Um, how was it assembled? Where was it assembled? Uh, what's the serial number? And if we get the serial number, uh, what's the status? But before going to that point, we need to address um, some key aspect, and that's true for all complaints, to start with, con containment. How should we isolate the problem? Should we um, um, introduce some specific quality assessment on this specific batch to make sure that whatever goes out of production from this production line does not cause any additional issues? And if so, how do we deal with that? Uh, fulfillments, how do we, and returns, how do we, how we return the, the faulty product, um, uh, the exact uh, product which uh, was the basis for the report, and if so, in what condition is that, is it something which we can use for further analysis. And um, uh, of course we want to set up the task uh, to perform our initial uh, regulatory assessment. Is there any uh, severe issue involved in this? Uh, is, is there perhaps uh, an injury, severe inju injury to the patient or perhaps death? And if so, what kind of reportability do we have re with regards to a regulatory body, FDA or uh, any European uh, Lekemans market, whatever it might be? Okay, um, if there is a regulatory report required, um, we want the system's uh, support uh, to determine what kind of reportability do we have. Um, and that's determined by the market where it's registered and the organization um, which is actually reporting this. Um, and then we want to automatically populate the adverse event report. And, um, uh, if we have uh, electronic mechanisms uh, to report this to, for, for example, the FDA, of course we want to use their PDF and their forms and populate those directly from uh, the quality process, uh, provide the proper, proper details and submit that to the uh, relevant database electronically. So we can track uh, the reporting uh, it directly and online in the system uh, where we keep our findings and our analysis. With this we can also keep track on delivery times, uh, what, when did we actually submit the information to whom, and we get a very detailed um, uh, tracing of um, uh, any communication, any product information and any findings reported to the regulatory authorities. And that's um, the level of detail and reportability we want to keep. Assume what, that we decide, or the quality lead decides to initiate a, a COPPA request. Um, we have the full capabilities for the COPPA appro approval. For um, uh, this, of course, uh, is um, uh, to setting up the proper routines, depending on what kind of COPPA we have. Um, uh, it's, um, proposes 
different uh, tasks and procedures. It also proposes different manning and skills involved in the COPPA process. And what will be new with 15X is the complete connection to the product risk assessment and the detailed functionality for this with the risk matrix. Um, uh, the detailed um, COPPA assessment and the COPPA details where we regard the COPPA as a cross-functional project, which means that it will have the same capabilities as we've seen in design controls with regards to stages and gates, with regards to resourcing, manning and planning. Uh, so we, at any point in time, can see, do we have, what kind of status do we have on the COPPA? Do we have the relevant resources assigned to it, um, the relevant skills? And do we have any potential bottlenecks, which means that the COPPA is not progressing at the pace we want it to? Then we go into the different details of the risk analysis and uh, the root cause. And that's when it's important to have the direct link between the COPPA, the product, and its IP history represented by the design controls. And that's what we have since it's connected to the PLM backbone. Um, when we've taken it through the analysis, we just want a quick approval um, and a, a smart route through our organization. And uh, here we have worked extensively both with the standard Inovia functionality out of the box to make it smoother to uh, and more action oriented. So uh, we can, for example, approve tasks from the Inovia client, from our daily workbench within Inovia, or through a mobile interface. Um, if I'm just a reviewer and I see that all contents are correct, I'm checked with my team that yes, fine, I can approve and release um, the COPPA, then I can easily uh, launch that information on my mobile device, my smartphone or iPad, and I can approve it part 11 compliant on those devices. We have the, um, at the end of the process, we have the mechanisms to make sure that all everything is closed properly, all the routines are uh, cleaned up, and um, we have our formal closure on the complaint. We might have closed the complaint in relation to the patient since uh, uh, some early stages. But um, we also want a reminder when we close the change, when we really change the design and release this design and it's effective in production, we want to give a notice back to the customer to say what you reported perhaps some time back, a month back or two months back, has now really been implemented uh, in production and um, your requested change uh, is available uh, for release. So we really have a uh, process which is visible to the end user, to the patient, to the customer, to our own internal organization uh, to provide the proper feedback at any process in time. So this is the uh, uh, typical of the process we cover quite in some detail and that's what we want to explain uh, with the demonstration today. Uh, this is what the process uh, looks like, this is how it works. So uh, let me log into um, uh, the demo environment. So in this case, um, um, I'm logged in as the quality lead, uh, David or David, uh, or David, depending on where you're located and in which country. Uh, this is um, the standard Inovia user interface for someone working actively with complaints. And this is the typical interface for a quality lead. Um, as you might be familiar with now, the 14X interface, on the left hand side we have our uh, different applications and um, this one, complaints and NCRs, this is the module uh, which I'm working with uh, primarily. Uh, of course, we will always uh, we will also use the COP and audit functionality when we when we start working with the uh, COP and audit uh, uh, functions. We will work with collaboration and approvals, which is the one uh, which perhaps a designer is working with 
when um, she is picking up her tasks, for example, doing the detailed assessment as part of a complaint process, um, uh, and approving their tasks. Uh, we might use the uh, device identification if we want to connect to a DI to see the traceability uh, of a, a specific product. Uh, we might want to access the market uh, registration functionality uh, to, to assess any uh, regulatory or ongoing submissions related to this specific case. And we have some of the other basic tools in our uh, uh, Inobia suite. We have document, control document release, uh, we have change management and uh, uh, requirements and test uh, assessment. But for now we'll stay in the complaints and NCR module. Um, okay, um, the standard interface is um, the complaints table. Uh, here we can see, here I have a quick overview of all open compl and active complaints. I can easily see in what state they are. I can switch between different states. Um, if I switch to the uh, create table, those are the new issues which have come up. In process are those I'm working actively with, um, and those were the ones we saw. Um, so uh, this is the mode I'll stay within. The information I have on each complaint then is um, of course their status, so I know how mature they are. Uh, what's the customer uh, severity? Um, uh, is it um, urgent? Is it um, high priority or severity? Uh, is it medium or low? I can see when we received it and it was report reported by whom. If I made an initial assessment on reportability, this column here will be highlighted. If it's an issue um, which is overdue with regards to the regulatory aspects and uh, uh, the reg relevant regulations, it will immediately be flagged uh, with a red icon here. And here we can see that we have a few severe issues. Uh, we have a quite severe malfunction and we have quite severe battery failure which actually led to a death or there was a death involved with the patient and therefore uh, these two are highlighted as concerns. I can see uh, which and which business unit this was reported and of course the details on, on the problem. Um, if there is a specific model involved, um, this is to get the traceability back to the prototype validation so I can understand how should this be validated and qualified if there is a change implemented. And of course for me to access all history on this specific device. Um, um, this is the internal review or state. Um, if it's in uh, uh, review mode or approved or released. And, um, seems um, most of these here are either in process or, or review. Um, for cycle times, uh, these I need to keep track on and these are automatically. Since this is a demo environment, they've been stripped, but um, uh, here I can see the exact uh, creation time, uh, how many days it's been uh, active, um, and in different states if it's in process. Um, the way I work with this table um, is um, uh, of course to do any detailed uh, drill down. For example, if I just want to uh, identify those issues uh, which are urgent, I can easily click on a filter. Uh, if I want to switch to uh, urgent is issues of a certain uh, uh, category, I can further drill down. So this gives me um, quick tools and quite easy and straightforward tools to do basic basic uh, assessment and trending. There are more advanced uh, monitoring and trending capabilities. Um, any standard trending capabilities and dashboarding required um, uh, from a management controls perspective. There is also baselining 
functionality and capabilities. So I can say at any point in time, what's the current baseline which I will use as input for a trending based decision. So assume that I come to a point where I have a specific issue on a specific product, it's been repeated three times, I believe that this is a reoccurring issue. If I decide that it is a re reoccurring issue, I have new complaints coming in, I want to be able to say um, this is the trend I've identified, this is the baseline I'm used for that decision, and I want to store that information. I can then share that as a collection to my colleagues um, or for future reference uh, as a decision point. And it will then be automatically logged to my audit trail. Um, if I drill down into one specific complaint, um, I have two different views on that. And um, I can close my filter here. Um, I could either uh, work with the details. This is typically information which I either read in from my ERP system, from my PLM system, but I might not uh, edit that information. Um, those are the invalidation details, closure details, reopen details. So it's really uh, to get what are the key aspects of this complaints. And under this uh, general tab, I also have my list of tasks if I have those active. Uh, in this case, I only have one task on regulatory report, reporting visible, uh, which seems perhaps somewhat odd, but um, that's what was true for this example. Actually, what I'll do is I'll go back to my main view and look at some different complaints. So, um, I'll uh, want to, in this case, uh, drill down into one of the severe issues. And I have uh, this one, which I'll use as an example. So in this case, I'll expand uh, the details. Um, I can see when I receive this one, I have some uh, details. Uh, it's related to an um, automat automated uh, external defibrillator. And um, we can see here that uh, it seems it was not launching up uh, when it was uh, used and um, that it has a severe it had a severe impact on that patient. Uh, if I want to um, so I'll minimize that window. If I want to see what has actually occurred to this complaint from when it was um, uh, generated, uh, I go to my complaints events uh, tree. And um, in this view, I can see anything uh, with regards to conclusions on the event. Here we see that there is an experience code death involved. Um, what kind of um, uh, issue uh, was reported? Um, so, it really gives me the details um, on reportability. I can see what kind of uh, product uh, was involved, and I can see here that the model AD Semi, semi uh, was the one which is related. From this, I can have one or many derived events uh, following this severe incident and this product, um, and I can see the details on the patient involved. For some implementations, uh, we might just have an attribute saying there was a patient involved and we need more detailed analysis on uh, the status of that patient. Uh, in um, this example, uh, it's out of the box, we have uh, some details on the patient. So here um, we can drill down have a closer, closer look at the uh, patient details. Uh, we can see that uh, the patient was uh, male and a man. Uh, he was 40 years old 
uh, quite light 70 kilos and perhaps some specific details on the actual uh, the assessment of, of the death and any diagnosis related to that. And then since it's a death involved, we might even have autopsy details. So um, that's the kind of lead detail I can uh, keep within the system. Um, so, um, uh, where we started uh, in our process flow, uh, we started off in the uh, with registration of a new complaint. This is um, uh, what a dialogue might look like if, in this case, we launch that uh, locally. And of course, uh, we have um, uh, customers using this module. Uh, in combination with um, uh, different CRM systems and different portals uh, for reporting directly into the um, Inovia implementation. Um, what's important here is that it's easy to um, uh, type in the information uh, and that it's easy to track the details on each uh, complaint. So, uh, whatever is marked with red here um, are the mandatory uh, fields we need. So, assume I get this report through a uh, hotline. Its um, customer severity is high. Um, we can use um, type ahead to be a little bit faster. So, um, at least in most fields. Um, but um, if we want to understand uh, uh, the different uh, values here, we might want to uh, open up the dialogues and search for specific, specific values. Either way. So I type in the findings. So also here I'm using the uh, type ahead. You can also have connection between uh, my product model and the product details. So whenever I type in either value here, it automatically populates uh, the other values. And that's, of course, in many cases, we might have the serial number directly on the device or the DI number uh, or PI number directly on the device. And if that's the case, um, then, of course, uh, it's uh, good to track that information as early as possible. Um, okay, the details on the patient. Let's type in. Let's So it's a small girl in this case, and um, the OK, I get a, an issue. I'm probably disconnected from my database here. Um, OK, um, uh, we will hence this uh, go back to the registered complaints. The first thing I do when I receive a new complaint uh, is to determine um, uh, what are the different tasks uh, which I want to assign to this. So if I'm the quality lead, I'll have a look at the complaint, I go to the task tab. Um, from here I might um, uh, create up uh, ad hoc tasks or I read um, a set of tasks from a template and under each and every task I'll have the details of that task 
which is a request to someone within my uh, organization um, uh, on what they are supposed to do. Um, this is the standard uh, routing capability uh, within the Nomia platform and um, it's, um, uh, it's a part 11 compliance uh, uh, routing uh, within the organization. So I have different tasks um, which I can distribute to different people within the organization. When they're done, I'll get a notice back. So standard routing capabilities. And for those uh, of you who are working with Venovia and familiar with Venovia, uh, this is typically what you already are using for change management. Um, so um, we have the different tasks and um, uh, the task assignments. Um, the assignments are done on a complaints uh, basis and uh, all activities uh, which I want to uh, apply uh, are supported with different functions uh, on the top level here. Um, besides the initial detail analysis, uh, typically what I want to do is to report re the returns and the fulfillments. Uh, what did we actually get from, uh, in return from, uh, from the customer? Um, and, uh, also, this functionality is, of course, connected to uh, uh, the product backbone. And also here I could use the, um, the serial number and the details on the product uh, to, uh, to determine um, the serial number and all the details, but also connected with uh, an um, uh, RMA number, which I might need to exchange with the uh, ERP system. So, um, uh, as you can see here, uh, this one is also connected uh, with my product backbone. I have a type ahead in some of the forms here. Um, so, in this way, I track all the steps of, uh, of the complaints. Um, for fulfillments, this would be the, how we compensate the customer uh, initially. Um, and then I have the different functions for both product evaluations and adverse events. To speed up the process here, and since my complaint creation actually failed, I will uh, use the um, television chef uh, alternative and um, launch up a movie and fast forward uh, up to the point uh, where we uh, as a design lead receives the uh, um, uh, initial detail investigation. So what's happened here prior is I've created the complaint uh, as quality lead, David. I've uh, created a few tasks and I've assigned one of them, uh, the uh, uh, detail analysis, to Thomas, the uh, uh, design engineer. So this is what it will look like for Thomas. He will um, perhaps work in Outlook uh, or he will view his tasks in box, in box and he could do this from Outlook or his email client or here directly from inside uh, Inovia. And you can see what kind of instructions he has on the task and um, he can um, drill into that. And you can see that, okay, uh, there was a uh, complaint uh, involved and um, there is a specific uh, a task assigned to it. Here he sees the instructions, so please investigate and detail the complaint and start the detail analysis. He then has an immediate link to the complaint and from there you can see okay, what's the uh, product issue, it's a malfunction, what kind of task do I have and who actually got the event reporting uh, responsibility for this task. He has the link to the product and uh, to the patient for a more detailed analysis. And he has also access to the details of the product, as you can see here. All the details from a private development project. 
Uh, there we can also see the connection to uh, the validation on the product model and a previous development project. And you can drill down into that development project to see status. For example, to determine is there an ongoing development project and if so, what's the deliverables and uh, how can we channel this complaint to that, uh, uh, to that development. Uh, but I'll fast forward um, to uh, the adverse event reporting. So in this case, um, we're logged in as Helen, a regulatory lead. She will receive a task similar to that of uh, Thomas, as we saw, but her responsibility is to, de is to determine reportability. She will run uh, a decision tree on this specific uh, uh, complaint and determine the reportability. So first she will review the uh, severity of the patient and based on that uh, determine reportability. And in this case she'll say and conclude that yes, since there is um, a death involved in this specific case, um, she would um, recommend a regulatory assessment and report to be issued. Um, she might check the details for the model, but more importantly, she'll run a decision tree, uh, which is the detail analysis um, for a specific market uh, to determine the reportability towards that market. In this case, she only has reportability on the US market. If she um, selects yes here, she has some follow-on questions which ne she needs to uh, complete. Um, and when done, she stores her uh, decisions and um, the proper template is issues, issued, in this case an MDR, 30 days report, um, and that can be used as template. Um, she will generate this template, initially of course obviously it's, it's empty, uh, but as soon as the information is available, uh, she will use this uh, template for her upcoming adverse event report. But first she needs to uh, uh, initiate the uh, report. She might check some details. And in a similar fashion, um, she will route through the organization for, uh, for approval, as we did with the other tasks. Okay, um, as we proceed, I'll uh, fast forward uh, once again, and um, we'll... Um, see that it's determined for reportable, it's in process, it's urgent. Um, we might evaluate this for further analysis as part of a COPPA. And, um, uh, if that's the case, um, we'll um, log our detail investigation. Uh, from that menu, uh, we will also be able to launch the COPPA request. And uh, if we launch the COPPA request, um, we get all the details for a more advanced risk assessment. It follows through the COPPA uh, lifecycle, and we get the full capabilities for a cross-functional COPPA analysis. So that's how we take that forward. Uh, so what um, I've shown you is um, some of the capabilities to support quality processes. Um, we looked at the complaint, how the complaint was generated, how it's connected to the quality process, um, how it's uh, connected to the COPPA process, and how the different tasks are taken through the organization. Um, there is as part of this suite, we have full functionality up until the complete closure. So it covers all the regulatory aspects, it covers all the 
uh, detailed engineering or manufacturing assessment. Uh, so it's a full suite for, um, for the quality processes. Today we primarily looked at the complaints on the crop up process, but um, uh, there is also the support for other processes. Uh, audits, uh, supplier risk assessments, uh, NCRs, whatever it might be. So with that, um, I'm finishing off the this webinar on the uh, quality processes. Um, this is actually the last webinar we will run on the 14X release. Uh, we will now take a break for a few weeks and um, uh, during those weeks we will we're planning an occasional UDI um, webinar uh, which will focus on the DI good ID in a, uh, processes uh, related to the regulatory filing. Uh, but then we will be back just before the summer holidays with um, a new uh, and restart of uh, the webinar series. Um, and we will then restart on the 15X release. Um, the 15X release have uh, added uh, key capabilities on some of the quality and regulatory processes but also on the basic uh, design controls functionality. Uh, there are specific um, uh, support from the early phases, especially ideation and conceptual design. There are the news to the COPPA process, especially the um, product risk assessment which is uh, extensively built out, um, which allows a good uh, level of functionality both on the risk assessment as well as on the usability processes. Uh, we have um, uh, quite some extensions on the regulatory filing and regulatory processes uh, which we'll dig deeper into. And then we have the um, general work taking a design from initial CAD conceptual design all through to the DMR and a more developed uh, uh, workflow to support specifically SOLIDWORKS which we will address. And that will be done either immediately before the summer holidays or immediately thereafter. At the same time we also want your input and your proposal on what you would like to see in the upcoming webinar session. So you're all invited to submit your own request on specific processes or specific functionality. Um, if it's something very basic such as search capabilities or how you check in and um, uh, handle a controlled document as part of document management capabilities or if it's something more advanced perhaps how do, how do we support the um, new conflict minerals regulation, especially if we want to have it connected to our COPPA processes. So these are probably some of the topics we will cover uh, in the sessions we run before the summer holidays. For sure we'll uh, reconnect on the UDI and DI good ID topic. And um, in the meantime, uh, visit the old webinars. Uh, those are already available on, under our events tab on the Technia webpage. Um, so, um, of course, either contact me with requests for future webinars or look at the old movies. There are quite a set now. I think there are, there are 11 movies on our, on our event page. So, uh, please view these, uh, revisit these, and uh, we'll keep in touch um, uh, in upcoming sessions. Thank you very much for attending today. I hope it's been useful as an introduction to the quality processes. Thank you very much for today, and goodbye. Bye-bye.